Good morning, guys. So, um, first off, I have to preface this video by saying, um, that I am currently without internet, or we're currently without Wi-Fi at the house, um, due to the construction that's going on, uh, back that way. Um, don't know when it's gonna be back, but as soon as I can, I will upload it. Um, I'm just going ahead and recording this to get it out of the way because I'm currently alone in the house. Um, also have to preface this by saying this will most likely be the last drama video I do. I just wanted to do a follow-up because more information has come out and I have thoughts. Um, so basically, if you guys watched my previous video, you know what's going on with, um, that the whole James Charles drama Geddon stuff has bubbled up again. And, um, so many people on the drama channels were like, um, were discussing it, and I didn't know what to believe, because, you know, I've heard different things about some of these channels, they lied, or that they were kind of like, you know, it, that they weren't using verifiable information, that kind of thing. So anyway, there is one channel I want you guys to check out. Her name is Smokey Glow. And she's not only, like, a drama talk about what's going on channel, but she also does makeup. And she's quite, um, she's quite good at what she does. She does, does a very good thing, but she also does get emotional when, when she gets emotional, if that makes sense. You know, she doesn't just hold back and it's like, and it's like, these are the facts, and these are what, you know, it's like, in her two previous videos, you know, because, like, something came out, and it was like, and she'd experienced that something, and so she was just like, yeah, this is not good. Um... So, anyway, I'm not keying into a huge amount of detail on it. Like I said, go watch Smoky Glow. Go watch, um, <coughs> Spill, I guess, is another one that I kind of like. Um, just because they go through all the facts and they go through the timeline and kind of that thing. Um, basically what I wanted to talk about, to put it to rest, is, um... I ended up unsubscribing from Cryotic, first off, um, because, and I don't remember what her name, oh, Tori the Human, that was her name. She made, like, at least three videos of that situation going behind the scenes, and she included clips of streams that Cry's former friends had posted about the situation and again you know it just added in more detail and more um and more stuff and so basically you know I, I, I mean cry was not only bad for you know for cheating and for all that but he also treated his apparently treated his friends like absolute crap, and I just was like, ooh, yeah, that's, that's not good. Well, and also kind of made it easier to unsubscribe from him, because he hasn't really been on YouTube lately. The most recent video he uploaded, besides the one where he, you know, like a starter combo for the situation was the, um, where he uploaded two parts of the new Ori game. I can't remember what it's called now, but, and I thought that was super cool, and I wanted to see more of it and stuff, and, but apparently, you know, he's back on Twitch, and so apparently he's, you know, he's gonna be on Twitch now for... And has been on Twitch for 
a long time, and so it was a lot easier to unsubscribe because he doesn't upload to the channel that I watch. Um, and I've tried Twitch, and I don't know, it just seems just really chaotic to me. I'm just kind of like, no, thank you, you know. So, to move on to the Jeffrey and Shane thing, um, Tati Owens, who was the person who kind of officially started the whole Dramageddon thing with her Bye Sister video where she talks, where she talks to James Charles in the video. Now, again, why she can not speak to him privately, I don't know. She said something about apparently she tried or apparently she tried to get through to him privately and it didn't work. So she thought this video would, would get him to, what was her quote? Put down his phone and listen to her. And I'm just like, okay, that sounds a little condescending, number one. Um... Sound like somebody my parents would say to me. Put down your phone and there's other things to do. And it's like, no. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Um, but yeah, and we still don't know. From what Tati said in her latest video, and I'm keeping this with grain of salt because, like I said, um, said, I never followed Tati before, I never, and I also think it was stupid how this whole thing started, because, you know, she had a thing of vitamins, and because James went to, what was it, Coachella or something? I don't know, one of those, one of those events. And was getting mobbed, and so he asked one of his friends to basically do a, a you know, to help him out. Because he knew she already had a, his friend had a brand deal. And so he was just like, can you help me out? I'm getting mobbed, you know, because apparently there were like levels of, you know, there was VIP and then there was, we'll keep you in the back, we'll keep you protected, and then you'll come out every once in a while and be like, hi guys, you know. Um, again, a lot of that stuff I just don't understand, and I probably never will, and that's okay. Um, but so, but so, yeah, but the thing that I was really listening for was who who was responsible because you know we've heard different things and we've been speculating was it Jeffrey was it Shane was it you know whatever and I kept believing that Shane was being manipulated by Jeffrey along with everybody else and so Turns out, apparently, again, have to put that in there, apparently, um, Shane was the one, you know, that Tati came out and said, yes, Shane offered to help me. He offered to come over and film me before I uploaded the video. He offered to come over. He wanted me to be... You know, thought it was like Shane wanted me to be a part of his series on uh, Jeffrey Star and on the beauty community, and that it was indeed going to be more about the drama, and then he changed it, and then it became more of the one that I found super fascinating, which was the process that goes into making a palette, the business end of everything. And all that, which I have been, I found that really super fascinating. I found that very interesting. Um, so, but then the other thing that kind of um, was just 
Yes. And I'm sorry, guys. I don't have a script or anything. I'm just kind of going off of how I feel. Like, I watched all this stuff yesterday, and now I'm just kind of, like, still processing everything, I guess. But, yeah. So, basically... Basically, um, come to find out that, according to Tati at least, Shane had more to do with her uploading that video. That Shane was the one who was telling her stuff about James. That Shane was the one who was like, I want you in my documentary, you but... You know, I can come over and film any time, and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, so, you know, and that made me go, oh. Because, like I said, up to this point, I thought, I thought it was just Jeffrey who was master. I still think he masterminded the whole thing. I still think he manipulated Shane and everybody. But I think he did it in his usual way and just, you know, kind of like whispered into everybody's ear or said things and then was just like, you know, this isn't, you know, you know, and then stood back and was like, my hands are clean, <laughs> you know, because I didn't do this. And, um... The other thing I have to say, say is that showing Jeffrey's true colors is all this stuff is going on. Shane's being dragged. Shane is being canceled like super bad. And where's Jeffrey? Has he come out at all to support his friend? Has he come out at all to say, guys, you know, even not to even say, guys, I did it, you know, even just to say, hey, guys, leave him alone, you know, or whatever, nope, he stayed completely silent, and matter of fact, apparently the last thing he said was like a week or so ago, where he said, I'm taking my 103-year-old grandmother to see the first house they, she grew up in. And I'm like, okay. But I mean, he's not saying, but then what other people have been saying, other the drum chants been saying is that the picture that he posted on that is like old from like a previous trip he took. It's the exact same photo and it's like, where are you really, you know? Because, and I don't mean to say anything against the elderly. I love the elderly. But you're taking a woman who's 103 years old, probably really frail. I mean, I'm assuming she could be tough as a horse. I don't know. But normally you don't take women, people that old to on long trips where they have to walk around and be like and be like, you know I mean, it's sweet if it's true but if it's true and uh, so, yeah so basically Jeffrey's not saying a word. And the click, the, uh, I believe what they sound not always right is the kicker is apparently right after, um, or right as the video aired or something, or right after the video got uploaded, Shane got on his Instagram live and decided to react 
to Tati's video. And when I say react, I mean he was not calm, he was not composed, he was not... You could tell he was angry, but you could tell he was also scared to death. And um, that he was just like... I mean, he was literally running around his house and he kept saying the posit and I didn't even know anybody else was there until you see Rylan going back in the background. And he's like, no, pause it, pause it, no, no, keep it going, I have to, you know. And it's like, I have to post this and, and it's like, Shane, number one, you don't have to post. You don't have to post this. You don't have to react to this. Take some time to think about it and then come out with a statement when you're calm. But, I mean, it was bad. It was like when you see a really bad accident on the freeway and you can't help but look, you know. It was just like, oh my gosh, it's just like a plane, you know, in flames coming down out of the sky, and you know what's going to happen. You know the mess that's going to happen. And you're just like, you know, can't do anything about it. Ugh. You know, and I have to confess, the whole shame thing sickens my stomach. I, because all this time I was just hoping, you know, it was going to come out, it was all Jeffrey. You know, that Shane was just like manipulated and he was going to come out and he was going to apologize. And he was going to be like, I am so sorry. I was fooled, you know, and all that. And, you know. And he could still have been. I still honestly believe that Jeffrey was like whispering in his ear or he left him notes or something and that he was just like, you know, look this up about James. Look this. Because apparently a lot of Shane's evidence have been stuff he looked up. And then of course there's the infamous voice memo that Jeffrey Starr found or was given I still don't know what the deal is with that all I know is that he he keeps well and there was like a podcast he was on with Keemstar which I could do a whole series about Keemstar but I'm not going to <laughs> but um yeah, so apparently he was saying he had this voice memo from a victim of James Charles and that he, you know, he was like, he was like, hey, you know, we'll pause this and, you know, we'll go into the other room and I'll play this for the other person who was on the podcast and then they can decide, you know. But then, you know, as so many people are saying in the comments, so you have two situations. Either, either this victim's, like, if this actually happened, if, you know, this victim somehow was able to send a voice memo or was able to get a hold of Jeffree Star, sent him a voice memo of what had happened or her or their story or whatever. And then was like, so... But then, I mean, Jeffrey was one who's come out and said, this person doesn't want to come forward. So why are you going around and sh going around? Because then after that, he 
apparently did, had a couple people who he got a hold of and sent them a copy of the voice memo or played it for them or something. And it's like... Okay, number one, if this is true and the victim does not want to come forward, why are you playing their voice memo? Why are you playing their, you know, their memo? And if the... Yeah, and if he did somehow manage to get the victim to say, yeah, you can play my play my memo or whatever. Why do the sneaky bit? Why not just give it to the police? Why not send it to, you know, a private investigator or something? You know? But no, instead it's, you know, he just said that. And he sent it to Tati, apparently. But the interesting thing that I, th that I think from her latest video is that she believes, or she thinks, that it was part of a large conversation. So... What was that larger conversation? And is Jeffrey doing his bit where he just takes a little piece of the story and it's like, look, you know. Oh, and also other things came out because after, um, after I watched, I watched a couple of reaction videos like Philip DeFranco and all that, and they were and we're reading the comments, and apparently, I don't remember which video this was, but somebody mentioned um, that um, that they think Shane's reason for being jealous of, Je jealous of James was because James, for a while, was going to do a documentary about the beauty world. And Shane wanted to do one. And so, apparently, Shane convinced James not to do it or something. I don't know, really. And then with Jeffrey, um, apparently... Because they're both part of the Morphe uh, makeup beauty company. And so apparently what happened with that was that James Charles had expressed interest in becoming an investor of Morphe. And Jeffrey either already was or something. And so... Or wanted to himself, and so that's why he wanted to take. Again, this is all speculation. This is, you know, but apparently, according to the person who posted that, there's evidence somewhere. I don't remember where or anything like that. And that. You know, lots of this is just speculation, so at this point we still don't know for sure what happened. We don't know what the voice memo says. We don't know, you know, we just know that there apparently is proof now. There apparently is, you know, and here's the other thing that kind of blew my mind, but I was like, you go, girl, is, um, Tati was reading most of her from a script that she said her legal team had put together for her. So she couldn't say everything that she wanted to, but that makes sense. And, you know, she very heavily implied 
that uh, there would be a day of reckoning that um, her lawyers would be getting in contact with witnesses and that certain people would probably find themselves in court. And so, if that's the case, I just gotta say, yeah. Because this isn't just mean girls. You know, this isn't just, just, oh, she, whispering down your back, oh, she's so fat, or, you know, oh, did you, you know, whatever. This isn't just whispering mean secrets on the internet. This is, I mean, from what James himself had said, you know, he almost took his own life as due to the same last year. And so I'm just like, oh, and that was the other kind of good thing is that um, Kati said that apparently her and James had made amends, but not only that, that they compared texts and screenshots and stuff and they both came to the same realization that Shane and Jeffrey were trying to take them down. And so... And that hurt. I mean, not so much for the Jeffrey thing. I still described from Jeffrey like, you know, that was not a big deal. But Shane... I've loved Shane's content. I've loved watching, even watching the documentary of how the palette was being made and the business stuff that went into it. I loved that. I loved the Spooky Boys content. You know, I hardly agree with everyone who's posting on the videos going, Go back to Karen and Drew and all that. I mean, that's not gonna fix the problem, but I mean, you don't see Garrett or Drew or hardly even Andrew in videos anymore. And it's just like, whoa. So. But yeah, that Instagram live, that was not good. That was, I mean, it's like a spooky glow said, where are your PR people? Where are the people who should have been telling you not to do this? You know, not to post this, not to, you know. And yeah, it was scary. Shane was spiraling down and in a way I'm scared for him. I don't want him to hurt himself. I don't want him to do anything that's like you know I just you know I don't know. I just I just don't understand why people can't why people who are in the same community can't get along. I mean, I understand not everybody's going to like everybody else. That's fine. But I don't understand why they can't get along with each other. So that's, um, that's my take on things. Um... Yeah, so basically we're all waiting to see what happens next. We're waiting to see if Jeffrey says anything. We're waiting to see if Shane comes out with another apology video or if he totally disappears from the internet, which I would not blame him at all. Oh, and the other thing that apparently I didn't even know about. Either I missed it, or I don't follow Ryland at all. But, um, so, 
Apparently, Rylan took to Twitter and called Tati a bunch of names and said that she was a manipulator, that she was all this, and, you know, everyone's like, and I understand, you're trying to protect your fiancé. I understand that. But at the same time, Maybe don't threaten somebody. So, actually, no, maybe if I do not threaten people. So, I unsubscribed. So, the only person from that whole inner circle thing that I follow right now is Morgan. And the other thing that I found really interesting is that Morgan's two most recent videos are of her in Colorado with her family and her friends doing normal stuff. You know, nothing to do with the drama, nothing to do with the things. You know, even her latest video with Ron Ryland's channel, which was, you know, making my sister a meal or whatever. And it was all about that stuff. And Morgan, apparently, was the only one, or the first one, to unfollow Jeffree Star on social media. So, maybe Morgan's the only really smart one in the family? I, I probably shouldn't say that. Forgive me. But at the same time, it's like, it's like, come on, you two. Especially Shane. Shane's been through enough drama that he should know not to poke the buzzing, be the buzzing hornet's nest, if you know what I mean. So, and then when Rylan posted what he did, on Twitter, I was just like, okay. Nope. You know, like I said, I'm not sure I 100% believe Tati yet, but she at least is doing the smart thing. If she was manipulated, if she was, you know, if she had these Two men t whispering in her ear, telling her all this crap about James Charles to make her worried about James and to make her feel like talking to him in private wouldn't work. So that she had to make a video, which then resulted in James losing a ton of subscribers and that whole mess, which is still going on to this day. Yeah, I'd lawyer up too. If I had a lawyer, I would be lawyering up. I would be like, you know, nope. And it's not even a matter of taking other people down. It's just a matter of... And a lot of what she said after she got done telling what had happened, she said, she said, we need to... Because he's going to go off, and I have a feeling a lot of people have the feeling she met Jeffrey. Because, I mean, Jeffrey's come right out and said, I have dirt on everybody. You know, so they know they keep their mouths shut, and it's like, oh boy. So, it was probably why Tati was like, I'm not making any more mistakes. I am going to consult with my lawyers. I'm going to... But, yeah, I don't think she came around and said it, but I think we should definitely expect to hear about a court case at some point in the future. Whether the whole truth comes out at that time, maybe, maybe not. But that's all I know. And 
I also have to say, uh, well, two things. Number one, thank you guys so much for 13 subscribers. I happen to notice that um, last time I checked my video and everything. Um, but yeah, thank you. It means a lot to me that we have uh, the double digits um, that we are gaining. Uh, gaining some more people to our little family. Um, and uh, number two, I forgot what number two was going to be. But basic, basically, I wanted to thank you guys for sticking with me through these two videos. Um, like I said, currently I have no internet, but as soon as that pops up, I will be uploading this to the channel and I will probably be changing the message on my community tab um, to more closely reflect what I've learned or I may just even just go post another like an encouraging message or something you know like have a great day or guys or whatever but anyway yes I want you guys to have a great day today um, don't let all the drama get to you. Go find something fun to do. Go for a walk if you can get on the internet. Find something that you really enjoy. You know, find something that you really enjoy and watch that. Um, even if it's like an old Let's Play or something like that. Uh, but I love you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. And, um, yeah. I will post again. Um, not sure when, but I will post again. And I love you guys, and I'll see you later.